This video is brought to you by Card Empire. If you're looking for Yu-Gi-Oh, Pokemon, or Magic of the Gathering, this is the place to be. Oh, what's up, people? Dobbs and Wussis right here, and welcome to another Yu-Gi-Oh show and tell. <laughs> now, today, I'm well. Today and in a few days, I'll be showing you both these two structure decks. Now, there is a load of other not other decks that I made, not structure decks. These are decks that I built myself and uh, they've made me win so many tournaments in the past and you may be thinking, not this one, definitely did not win with tournaments for this because this is a deck that I use when I have retired. And I'll tell you the story in a moment because this is the one I'm just going to show you today, the Exodia deck. Just to tell you the story now, I used to duel all the time. I used to go into tournaments, I used to go to do championships won a few, I've lost a few, I've never become full on champion, I know that for sure, but I was getting close to getting that chance, but it never happened. So I officially retired myself in 2014. That's a long, long time ago, people. It's about six years ago I retired because I thought to myself, that's enough, I don't want to do this anymore. I don't want to go ahead and waste my time trying to become a champion and everything. I know I'm not as good as the rest of them. I know a lot of people concentrate on one deck and one deck only and that's it. I do it for fun, okay? And that's when I became myself a gambler of Yu-Gi-Oh! And what you might be thinking, what do you mean by a gambler, Dobsy? I offer up a card that I somebody wants from me and I want the card from them. And whoever wins, they get the card. Um, we sometimes do it with money, so like I'll bet a fiver, they'll bet a fiver, and we may either throw in a, a pack of cards or something. That's how we do it. But I only go by one stipulation, and that is no holds barred. Now a lot of people know by this by wrestling moments, meaning anything goes. So your deck could have everything. It could have limited cards, it could have forbidden cards. But there is one rule, you can only have one copy of Exodia, that's it. You can have many copies of Egyptian Gods, the Wicked Cards, Upstar Goblins, uh, Mystical Space Siphons, Regekis, anything. But the one rule was only one pet piece of Exodia, that's it. That was the only thing, you can't, you can't, you can't full on cheat yourself on having all pieces of Exodia in your deck. Maximum three sets of everything besides Exodia. That's why I call myself the No Holds Barred match. Every single match I do now is No Holds Barred. And I always use this deck because I know this deck is freaking a killer to beat. And I'm going to show you in a second. Be right back. Okay, we're back now. So let's open this bad boy up. Now, I have not opened up this deck box in quite a long time. And as you can see, it's a very small deck. Now, it is full of random cards. And you may think, why on earth? But when you start to see them, you'd understand. So let's go ahead. I wanna just try and fix this deck up a little bit, trying to work with it. So of course, you get yourself one, two, three, four, five, all five pieces of Exodia. No biggie, as you guys know what it is, get all five pieces in your hand, you win the game. That's the main way of me winning this deck. But this is where it comes in with a bit of uh, the no horse bard. Okay, so first off, the first card I get is the Muna Maidens. Two copies of this. It's mainly a flip effect, um, you can draw one card but then you have to discard one card. That's all it does, okay? Next up, I have myself a Cyber Dragon. The reason why I have the Cyber Dragon is because, of course, if the guy has a monster on the field, I need to protect myself so easily. Special summon this straight out, I'll be happy, and it'll keep me protected for a little bit unless the guy has something even stronger. So there's that. I also have myself, besides the Cyber Dragon, I have three Cyber Ouroboros. Uh, what this card mainly does, uh, when this card is removed from play, I can only I can send one card from my hand to the graveyard to draw one card. So pretty much if I have something like, um, oh, what was it called now? What's in my deck? Um, a lower darkness, and I draw this in my hand, and then I remove it from play. It activates the effect to make me lose, drop, put one card in the graveyard, and then draw another card. I can do that three times. So that's how I like to play this game. 
You can see how uh, dangerous this deck is going to be now, of course. Next up, Electromagnetic Turtle. This is another card I'd used with the Cyber Ouroboros. If this card is actually in my hand as well, send that to the graveyard. It also protects me for one whole turn because I will move it from play, of course. The next thing I have, I, I have two more defenders, which is two Karibos. I have them in my hand, back, uh, send one to the graveyard slash uh, remove them from play. It stops the attack for one attack, so it again stops me from two plays. Next up, I have also as well, I have the Tricky. It's something I like using, it's another thing I like to use, so I can easily, if I'm struggling on something, I'll just get rid of one card to special summon it right away and keep me protected for a bit and give a bit of damage if I need to. Um, Mad Reloader is another card I like using. Now you can see how much hard bar, uh, no holds bar this deck can be. Um, when this card is destroyed by battle and sent to the graveyard, it can, I can send two cards from my hand to the graveyard, and if I do, draw two cards. I like this card a lot. This thing has always made my deck so broken and so extreme. This thing is like ECW on steroids. It is hardcore to the max. Next up as well, of course, you get yourself Card Card D. The effect is everybody knows it. You special summon it during the main phase, and if this card is normal summoned, this turn I contribute it to draw two cards. I always play it if I really need to, to get myself more cards. So I like using it. Next up, of course, Morphin Jar. Now this is why I stand, that's why I'm saying this is no old bar because a lot of cards are here now. I stand become forbidden and extremely banned, and Morphin Jar is definitely one of them. Um, gets flip played either way, or even gets flipped and then this destroyed. Both players lose their whole entire hand, and then we draw. I uh, we draw five cards. It's good to do something to get to get the game begin with. But stray ghosts. What else can I say? I don't care about the tuner effect, but as, as well though, when you get flipped, I can special summon any number of um, black sheep cards onto the field. Protect me all, all, all time. Then I have myself the Emissary of the Afterlife. Destroy it, I can play a level 3 or lower monster from my deck to my hand, which will be always one of the Egyptian one of the um, pieces of Exodia. And then my last monster, of course, is Marshmallow. <laughs> Pretty much a full on wall to protect me all the way through. Um, when it gets flipped, it deals 1000 damage to the player. So I love it. So now let's move on to spells, shall we? Oh boy, the spells. What's not to love and hate them, people? What's not to love and hate them? Well, first off, my burn of all things Wave Motion Cannon, Japanese. I do have English ones, but I like the Japanese one because it looks more badass and looks more cooler. Uh, once again, per turn, adds a thousand points into the cannon. You activate it, makes them lose X amount of thousand points per turn you, this card has been on play. And it is a continuous spell, so it is worth using it. As well, I've got myself one, two, three copies of Lower Darkness. You know that what them are for. They're for them Cyber Ouroboroses, but I do have all the Dark Creatures as well to keep me going. If anything goes wrong, pretty much you draw two cards, banish one Dark. If you don't have any Darks in your hand, you lose your whole entire hand. So it is a risk to take, but I like taking that risk. I only have one Mystical Space Typhoon because why the hell not? I don't like to go overboard because I like to give people a bit of a chance, but not as much. Um, once again, only one pot of greed. Can't go that far, can I? <laughs> but I do have myself a pot of archive. <laughs> this is, that's what I'm telling you people, this is a dangerous deck. I know a lot of people may be thinking, oh, this deck is a piece of, piece of pee, because I can beat this. But remember people, this is a retired deck, and it is a no holds bar deck. I also have myself two gold sarcophaguses. You go, guys know what that is. You pick a card from the deck, put it in your, put it on that side, wait for one turn, and then bang, you play it straight onto the field or put it in your hand. It's good to use. One Swords of Revealing Light, you wait for three turns. One Upstar Goblin, you draw one card, and the guy gets a thousand life points. A pot of duality, and I actually forgot, I do have a second pot of greed. Sorry about that. Oh, sorry, how about a third? <laughs> yes, I was lying there. Actually, I do have three pot of greeds. 
Yeah, you think I was lying about, think I was kidding about just one pot of greed? I've got three. <laughs> That's why it's such an OP deck. But I also have myself three Dark Spirit Art Greeds for traps. Once again, um, if the opponent doesn't have any monsters in their hand, is it monsters or is it spells? Oh, I right, reveal one spell card, I keep forgetting. If the opponent doesn't have any spells in the hand, I could draw two monsters. I mean, draw two cards, but I have to attribute one dark. But if the opponent has a spell card, this deck, this that trap card gets negated. I do have two more protections, two mirror forces, a magic cylinder, and a gravity bind. Yeah, <laughs> I got trap cards that can protect me, monsters protect me, and all spells to protect me. Just so I can go ahead and win with the Exodia. So, this is a no holds barred deck. You guys already know that. It's a retired deck as well. So, if people wanted to face me and they wanted to put their best card against my best card, winner takes all or money, <laughs> try your luck because I've never lost with this deck. Never. I have never lost. That's why I'm always the gambler when it comes to this deck. Always. If you guys think you can beat this deck, please let me know. And if you want to try and face me, bring it on. Make sure you leave a like, subscribe, comment down below, and also check out Card Empire, the place to be in Manchester, Stockport, and Liverpool. And Leeds. The people on the studio see you guys for subscribing, and I'll see you guys next time. Cheerio! Well, that people like using it for grass. We got some reverse foil, uh, Sterny. Oh my god! Secret Red Next Ball! Oh my goodness! I thought that was the Ultra Ball for a second, but it ain't, it's the Nest Ball. Oh, baby, wait a minute. One for the... Uh, did I do... Oh. Oh. Oh!